Hello, welcome to another Azure centric podcast. My name is Marcus Nguera. I'm the, your host for this podcast this week. And today we have a kind of a short week uh, regarding on Azure. Uh, a few only updates. It's the beginning of the year. Everyone is coming back. And, and that's the reason. We have very good updates, this this one. A particular one that I, that I, I like the most, um, to be very honest. It's it's a tool that, that did save me a lot of times. Um, although I didn't use it in the full capacity, but I, I did use a couple of times and it saved me uh, uh, um, a couple of times, as, as I mentioned. So before we start, I just want to thank you for the amazing uh, support that you guys give me. Don't get, don't forget to just subscribe the channel, um, either on the YouTube or uh, any other uh, audio uh, files. In this case, like um, Spotify, uh, uh, Google Chrome, and all of those type of things that we are uh, there. Right, so don't forget to do that because it's really important for us. So before we start, let's roll and start with the updates. So the first update is the general availability of the AC Snap Seven. Uh, of the Azure application consistent snapshot tools updates. So this tool, it was released on the version seven late December last year. Uh, although we are already in January, we are on, on, the, on the first weeks of January and they already come with the updates. So, but what is this AC, AZ AC snap? So the AZC snap is nothing more than the Azure application consistent uh, snapshot tool. Um, it's a great tool that you can use it, okay? It's supported for databases, OSs, and other Azure platforms. It can be used for a lot of other things. So one of the main features that I like about this AZ, um, AC snap is that he basically what it does, as the name says, the application, um, the Azure application consistent snapshot tools, it allows you to snapshot either databases or large amount of file shares, okay, of files. So it's it's really powerful because it's a way that you can create this consistency uh, for your application. So. Everyone knows that when you're doing a snapshot, it's really critical that you have the entire system to be consistent. So you don't only snapshot the database, the files, for example, and then everything else regarding the application, it's not set up correctly. One of the examples for that is, is on ASR. Not related to this, but with, with ASR, uh, in this case, Azure Site Recovery, when you're trying to uh, snapshot in this case, or trying to just create that recovery point, it's really, really key for applications. For example, if you have a web, um, a web application and database tier, that you can use that to just be able to to connect and to be able to have exactly the same. Set timestamp for every single application, every single tier. So then when you restore it, you don't have, for example, a database on one time and then the web server on the other time and application at a time. So then it creates that consistency when you create those restoring points. So exactly the same way over here. Although this is totally different. This is a common line tool. It's not um, a graphic interface, but it's pretty powerful. Okay, these updates, what they are doing is they are doing an improvement on the Azure Backup integration. So now you can use this to create those snapshots, right? Consistently on your application, databases, file shares, for example, okay? You have preliminary support for Azure NetApp files backup is in preview, although these updates, this version seven has been released, like I said, in December, although this update is in preview for Azure NetApp Files Backup, 
pretty powerful this one uh, ibm db2 databases it's now supporting adding some configuration tests and snapshots for those databases uh, shortening the name uh, of the snapshots so now you are the possibility of shorting those names you don't need to have those very long names the restore and the tests they are, they did improve that as well and the validation and timeout improvements but what are really the benefits in where i use in this case or when i use those snapshots uh, or those ac az ac snap so usually i use these for the ad doc volume protection and cloning the storage volumes okay it's where i mainly use this tool there are a lot of other things that you can use on this tool which is pretty pretty powerful but for this case what i use is when i see the benefits of this i don't use much on backing up or in this case not creating a snapshot of sap ana uh, db2 uh, and and all of those oracle databases for example but i use more on the on the azure platform for those volume cloning so when you want to clone those volumes for example and you want to start in creating those snapshots um it's really critical to use this tool uh for example uh, although you can use this tool as your consistent way to do those to those those snapshots and then backing up those snapshots without any problem it's pretty powerful on that way but in my case what i did use for this mainly for cloning um, and for adding, in this case, the volume protection. Uh, to be very honest, I never use this as a disaster recovery, although it's totally supported for doing that. Okay, I never use it. So that's why I want to bring this because, especially with Azure NetApp Files Backup, it's pretty powerful what they are doing with this tool. Um, I, I believe so. That's why I want to bring over here. Okay, so moving to the next um to the next update is the general availability of the azure ultra disk storage in switzerland north and korea south so even those small uh, regions like switzerland right north uh, they will make available right now as a ga the azure ultra disk storage i mentioned here a lot of times on this on this channel on this podcast that those ultra disk storage are really powerful it's usually when you need the high through output when you need those high iops um, for that low consistent in this case latency it's not used for everything because it's it's expensive It's the most expensive disk that you can have on azure so then uh, it's not for everything although it's pretty good when you use it usually when i see this when i use this type of disks it's more like for those data intensive workloads such as for example sap uh, and um, such as top tier databases such as to the um, transaction heavy workloads those are the main candidates for this type of disks but what is good with this update is that now um, switzerland north and korea south they have available this ultra disk storage in uh, in those regions it's pretty powerful what uh, what uh, azure is doing regarding even small regions like those ones right the next update it's one of my favorites for this week. Um, that is the general availability of Azure Active Directory authentication for exporting and importing managed disks. I think I bring this over, uh, not this particular uh, um, update to the channel, um, but I think I bring to, to this podcast that long, not long time ago, but the way that you can import and export those managed disks, you can do it to the trusted Azure Virtual Networks, meaning that you can use the private link to import and export those, um, those managed disks. Although this, it adds an extra layer of security because 
as you know, when you importing those managed disks, you and importing and exporting those managed disks, you have a URL link. Yes, it's resolved by the private link, but you still have a URL link. It was missing something over here. This one, this general availability, that's why I'm really excited about this. It's now we can almost full closure that security because it's not only using our internal network to import and export those those disks right um those manage disks but also now i can grab and starting to have some of those um, Azure Active Directory permissions, in this case, making authentication to enable that access to that to that managed disk. So now this makes us a little bit more um, secure because it's not only available that you are exporting the disk, but now you need permission, okay, to validate if the user that is being authenticated by the uh, Active Directory uh, allows you to have permission to export or export that disk. So a good example of this is when you're starting to have, for example, some kind of those migrations or some kind of, of possibility of exporting the disk, you can create those type of access. So exporting the disk is not that critical when you are importing the disk right and now you can affect in this case that workload that you are running on azure um, so exporting this you can be for a lot of other reasons but importing the disk when it's critical only a few accounts should be able to do that right exporting disk is critical for example when you are when you have um an active directory domain controller that is running on azure and it's not good that you allow almost a lot of users to just download and to export that disk. Because now, offline, you can try to just hammer down the Active Direct database to try to figure out what are the accounts, for example. So all of this allows us, as and that means as an architect, right, to just creating another segregation of um, security on those disks and allow us to just going on that path. So this is pretty cool. It's another layer of security. I think it's the totally circle that we were needed uh, specifically for that exportation uh, and importing of those managed disks, right? In a lot of cases, that um, it was needed to just creating a kind of a circle, even on automation tools, right? When you have those type of creation that you want to kind of uh, reset those and in even creating that uh, export disk uh, uh, or, or creating that kind of a snapshot, let's go this way, uh, on that managed disk, it's important to do, the, to do so, to have that type of layer to just lock down that type of resource. Right? So moving to the next one and talking about automation, on public preview, we have the Azure Automation Visual Studio Code extension. Usually, this is not one of the updates that I bring into this podcast. Although, because I'm a heavily user um, of the Visual Studio Code, and now I have this extension of Azure Automation, I don't need to create my runbooks okay, anymore on my Visual Code and then export that to import into the Azure Automation accounts. So now, with this extension, I'm able to quickly create and manage outbooks, everything done by the Visual Studio Code. Okay, so pretty powerful um, update. It's pretty unique uh, regarding this, and it it's allows you to do a lot of things regarding the Visual Studio Code, right? So uh, if you are a fan like me of, of automating every single step of the process, or the majority of those, right? It's pretty powerful what you can do regarding that, right? So this allows us to just doing this, um, to just having that extension to Visual Studio. What I want to bring is, this is public preview. So be careful when you are uh, 
when you are coding, right, or when you are creating those uh, Azure Automation workbooks, right, to be able to do this through this extension. Because I don't know, I, I, I didn't test it. It's really recent. Um, but my experience with public review is when it comes available, it will come another version. And I don't know if that is going to change the way that you are um, publishing that um that workbook into Azure. So I just want you to have to have a, a word of caution. It's not the first time that you that you hear um, in this podcast when it comes to the public preview updates. I just want to have uh, that so you can be covered and you don't have anything else regarding that. Okay. So for today. That is all the updates, or for this week, that is all the updates. I th uh, I hope that you like it. Um, they are, again, a pretty short week, uh, which is good. Make this podcast easy to be uh, seen or listen. And if you don't, if you don't mind, uh, help us, or help me in this case, spread the word, uh, giving a thumbs like, uh, smash that, that that like button or give some feedback uh, or what you want to see. As I promised, there are a lot of new content for this year and I hope that you like this format. So thank you for now and I hope I can see you next week. Bye for now.